Hello, this is Yolanda Murphy, and welcome to this Exceptional Journey podcast, where you will find inspiration to live courageously through adversity, empowerment to live freely despite your past, and ignition to live boldly in your purpose, all by walking the survivor side of life. My good people, what is up? Of course, it's your girl, Yolanda Murphy, back with another episode of this Exceptional Journey podcast. I mean, is it the end of 2019 or (laughs) not? If this is your first time listening, hello, welcome, come on in, have a seat, grab a glass of whatever you'd like. (laughs) If this is not your first time, welcome back. It's the end of the year. Let's go ahead and converse about it. (laughs) Either way it goes, I'm so appreciative of you guys for clicking over to my little corner of the podcast world and rocking with me just for a little bit. As you know, I'm going to plug social media right here just because I'm Forgetful Jones, which no one seems to know who that is. We'll talk about that later in another podcast. Um, But my social media, Facebook, Instagram, at This Exceptional Journey. And then at Twitter, it's at T-E-J Podcast. Hit me up. Hashtag me on any of those T-E-J Podcast questions, comments, suggestions. I want to hear. I want to know what you guys think. Let's connect. Let's be friends. (laughs) Cool. Awesome. So as you can tell from the title, this is going to be a good one. At least I think it's going to be a good one. Um, It's the end of the freaking year. What? It is the actual end of 2018. Where in the world did the year go? (laughs) I can't be the only one. I cannot be the only one that thinks I was just ringing in 2018 or it was just the, to me, it was just the summertime. Legit. It was to me just the summertime. It was warm and crisp and I was eating barbecue and sipping things. (laughs) It's December, like about to be January. What? So, Either way it goes, as you can tell by the title, I wanted to touch on a few things um, at the end of the year, Um, and I think maybe I'll do another podcast at the beginning of the year, uh, just to give clarification to end one and to start anew. I know, so deep, right? (laughs) But either way it goes, again, as you can tell by the title, I want to talk about 2018. Now, Here's my thing. I'm just going to let you guys know. I don't set resolutions. I don't. Um, Here's the thing about it. And I'm a very literal person. Anyone who knows me knows I'm very logical. I'm also, I'm a very, you know, God made me, he made me very special. (laughs) But I'm very logical, very literal. um, But I'm also very sensitive. I'm also very emotional. Maybe that's you know, I'm a woman, you know, that's sometimes what people say we do, but, uh, I don't set resolutions because the word resolution to me, well, in, even in the dictionary is a thing. It's a noun. It is a thing like something you want to carry out. Nothing wrong with it nothing wrong with it, but it's something tangible. Um, you want to hold or you want to attain or something you want to work towards. It's a thing. Noun. We know our parts of our English, hopefully. Right. (laughs) And I'll get to this later in the podcast, but I don't want to do nouns. You can't do nouns. And I hope this makes sense to someone 
at some point. <laughs> you can't do nouns. You can't do things and expect to be made new. I'm not trying to be deep, y'all. I, I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. But this is this is my thought process. I don't want to set a thing to do and things are not what gets me to where I want to be. I'm just going to put that right there real quick. And then at the end of the podcast, I'm going to pick it back up. Okay. If it doesn't make sense, hopefully it makes sense before the end of the podcast. (laughs) But anyway, you know, I was sitting here, it is literally the end of December and I was like, what am I going to say? What am I going to record? What I'm, you know, what do people want to hear? <laughs> um, and I was thinking to myself, let's recap 2018. Let's go ahead and talk about it. I had some amazing moments. I literally, and not just this year, last year was pretty good for me as well. Um, but I was literally sitting here thinking like, my 2018 was kind of astounding, to be honest. There were a lot of firsts for me. <laughs> there were a lot of firsts. There were a lot of firsts. And in retrospect, I'm grateful that I was able to live through and to these firsts. And I'll explain a, a little bit in a second. So, I don't know how you're ending your 2018, to be honest. I don't know if you're up about it, if you're down about it, if you're someone who does set resolutions, that's fine. Literally, that do you, please. Um, 2018 was great. 2018, it was a good time. It really was. Like, first of all, let's just start with the most obvious thing. I am still alive. (laughs) You guys, and I'm I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to, you know, joke. But the reality is one of the uh, social media posts that I put on Instagram, maybe within the last month, was that I have survived what killed some people. Let's let that sink in for a minute. And... That is the honest to God's truth. So maybe let's start with the lows because that kind of like segues into that. I had a difficult end of the year. I did. I did. If you've listened to previous podcasts, um, if you've seen any of my social media, you've seen that at the end of this year, it was difficult for me. Uh, Right around the end of October, beginning of November, started a cluster of cancer deaths and not just with breast cancer. Um, there were, there were a few, um, breast cancer, uh, survivors that I knew that passed away, unfortunately from stage four stage hashtag stage four needs more. Um, but there was a young man also from my support group here in the city of Pittsburgh with cancer caring center. He had brain cancer Um, and then one of my close friends from my church, um, he had cancer as well. Um, he passed away, unfortunately. So it's not just been breast cancer. It's been cancer has taken, if I had to guess just within maybe a two to three week window, six, five to six people that I know was difficult. It was very difficult. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and listen to the death toll, um, deaths toll podcast, and you'll know what I'm talking about. But so I say that to say that was a low for me this year. Um, But another low for me was going back. And this is very tedious. Maybe this is first world problems. I don't know. Um, But another low for me was going back to work in the office. If you're watching the YouTube video, where you see me right now is in my home office. Um, and literally this has been my home working um, since I started working from home after chemo. Well, actually even a little bit before chemo, uh, March 6, 2016, 
um, this has been where I've been up until this year. I've worked full time from home since 2016. And I started going back into the office this year in May. And then I actually got my own desk again in the office um, in October. And again, this is not necessarily, a, it's not a negative thing, but it was different for me, guys. If I have to be honest, it was different because again, once my manager, who was absolutely amazing um, during my whole journey with breast cancer, found out I was about to go through chemo, he was like, just work from home. I was like, what? Um, so after my surgery in March, 2016, I came back three weeks later and he was like, oh, here's your stuff to work from home. Here's your computer and this and your phone and what have you. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> but, um, so since then, literally, um, uh, March to probably September, 2016, depending upon how I felt after chemo. Cause I, I mean, I'm sorry guys, I worked. I wanted to save my PTO. I don't know if that's horrible or not, but <laughs> all through going through chemo, I mean, I used some PTO if I needed it, like if I was feeling sick or if I'm feeling down. Um, but to be honest, my chemo side effects during chemo, not to say they weren't that bad, but I think because I was already someone who was strong, they weren't that bad. Everyone's different, but, uh, so I was still working through it. You know what I mean? Like from again, the end of March until I think I went back a couple of days before my birthday, which is my birthday is April 2nd. And, um, but from that time until September, when I actually was told, Oh, girlfriend, you know, we need your desk because <laughs> you're only here like once a week. <laughs> So we need your deck desk for someone who's going to be here more often. I was like, I'll come in and get my stuff. Sure. So literally September, 2016 is when I started working full time from home and never went into the office unless it was like a holiday party or something like that, which I was cool with. Don't get me wrong. But to come back to the office in May of this year, one day a week, and then in October, so when I came back in May, let me clarify, when I came back in May, um, because of the number of people in my department in our area, we only had a certain number of desks assigned to us. And we had to share desks initially because all of us, if, if I had to say in my direct department, there's maybe about seven to 10 of us. And all of us are only come in one day a week into the office, I mean. And um, so they were like, we're not going to build you guys out new desks and you're only here one day a week. So that meant we had to go around each other's schedules and, you know, all of that rigmarole. Um, so that was from May until September, I'm sorry, until October. Um, and then in October, my manager made the executive decision um, to say, okay, no, everyone needs their own desk because you shouldn't have to pick the day you come into work based upon who's not here or here. So either way it goes, in our little section of the floor, they built out X amount of desks and doubled it, which meant everyone had their own desk. And literally, and if you haven't already, check out my blog, um, this exceptional journey.com because a little bit on the side, <laughs> I kind of write, I creatively write and I've been doing it since I was little. Um, and I'm trying to get back into it. You know, when I feel a thing or when I see a thing, I try to creatively write about it. And my first day back in the office with my own desk, which I honestly, guys, I really didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. To be honest, I didn't think because, I mean, it's just I'm doing the same job I've been doing for X amount of years. I'm in the same building, in the same section that I've been doing this job in for X amount of years. I didn't really think it was going to be that big a deal, big a deal, if you can hear my quotes. Um, but it was, and, and it surprised me. So if you haven't, click on over to this exceptional journey. 
uh, com and check out my little creative writing I did about my first day back in the office with my own desk. It was surreal. It was because the last time I had my own desk was when I was diagnosed. So to be back in my own desk, it's this whole thing, guys. I'm not going to go into it. Check out the blog, comment if you have questions. <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily a low. I wouldn't say it was a low per se, but it was different. It was different because it left me with a lot of mixed emotions. And to be honest, if you're a cancer survivor and you're listening to this, almost everything you do now, <laughs> almost everything you do now, you have to find the new normal of it. And that, I mean, of every area of life, because you're not the same person you were before, but you're walking into environments, you're walking into friendships or work friendships where they knew you who you were before and you're not that same person. So it's just been interesting. <laughs> it's just been interesting to say the least. So to be honest, like not too many negative things happened to me this year and I'm grateful. Hello. Um, but the last thing I would probably, um, bring up would be that I learned it was either the end of November or the beginning of this month, December, that I'm now in early menopause. So here's the kicker. And I, to be honest, now on this side of breast cancer, which would be after breast cancer, ABC, <laughs> um, I try not to dwell on the negative. I really do. I mean, of course, you have to face reality. You have to face, okay, this is where my body is right now. But it's been interesting. It, it definitely has been interesting and that I have not had a cycle, an actual cycle as a woman, you know what I'm talking about, um, since September of this year. And that might be TMI. I apologize, but this is about the survivor's journey, right? <laughs> this exceptional journey. <laughs> um, but I have not had a cycle since then. And I've, I have been feeling since maybe end of October, maybe middle of October, beginning of November, some side effects from it. And I was like, I feel weird. Like, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I'm 39 for goodness sake. Like, you don't know what menopause feels like. You don't know what it feels like to not have estrogen streaming through your veins as a woman. I mean, what? <laughs> but I started to feel different um, in numerous ways in numerous areas of my life. And I was like, something's different. One of them chief being, I, w I started to have breast pain. And of course, you know, being a survivor of breast cancer, you're like, oh no, we're not going to play these games. So I went and I told my, I had my um, annual oncology appointment, appointment um, in October, I think it was in October. Um, and I was like, hey, like, this is what's going on. She was like, let's get another mammogram. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and I got it done. Everything came back clear. And, um, she was like, this is probably what's going on. So then maybe like a couple weeks later, or maybe even a week later, I had my medical oncology appointment and I brought it up to him. And he was like, oh, we saw you had a mammogram recently. You was something going on and, you know, I explained everything. And he was like, okay, cool. And he was like, when was your last cycle? And I let him know, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, when I told him I did not have a cycle since September, he kind of shook his head a little bit. He was like, hmm. You know, with, cause I'm on tamoxifen. I've been on tamoxifen from tamoxifen. I'm sorry, for two years. It made two years in October of this year. And he was like, hmm, okay. And he knows I'm very positive. I'm like, I want to know. He's like, I'm like all the time. Well, what do you think this is? What do you, like, I'm all about it. I'm not one of those. No, 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 no. I need to know. So what is it? What do you think it is? Let's go get it checked out. So he was like, it's not uncommon for someone who's on, you know, the medicine that you're on for your body to go through this. He said, to be honest, I've seen women who have been on this medicine and then be off of it, <clears throat> excuse me, off of it for the amount of time you know, that is allotted. And then their cycle comes back and everything is restored to normal. And I'm like, okay. He also treated my aunt who had breast cancer. So because I trust him, I'm like, okay, okay. So if this is what you're saying, and then he looked at my face, he was like, I feel like there's nothing to be concerned about. I was like, okay, I, I trust what you're saying. Um, 
So, but I say all of that to say this just happened at the end of the year. I'm still processing it because probably with other, you know, many people, um, the end of the year is always busy. Like it's just after Thanksgiving, I don't even know where time goes. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea, idea of where time goes. Like, I don't know where the time goes, <laughs> but either way it goes, I, I wanted to bring that up because my year did kind of end on a low. Um, I've literally been having dreams about being pregnant. Um, and I've never, I have literally never dreamed about being pregnant. It's ne don't get me wrong. I've wanted a billion kids since, you know, it, forever. If you would have asked me at 12, if you would have asked me at 20, if you would have asked me at 30, I would have said, I want a billion and million kids. But I've always wanted a lot of kids literally since I was younger. Um, but when breast cancer hits, you kind of don't think about that because you're worried about living. You know what I mean? You're worried about actually keeping a heartbeat and keeping healthy through to another day. That was my, my goal and my focus. And so now that I'm on the other side of things, I'm like, Oh dang, like I'm in early menopause. What does that mean? Not if I was someone who already had children or was already married, that brings up a whole, listen, that brings up a whole nother gamut of issues. I'm dating, you know, I'm dating. But I mean, I think one guy at this time that I've been dating knows that I had breast cancer only because he and I met through a mutual location, if that makes sense. Like he's a regular at a place. I'm a regular at a place. We've been seeing each other for years. Hey, how you doing? Okay, let's get to know each other. Wonderful. Um, but he already knew about it just from being a regular from where we are. Before a new guy though? How do you bring that up? And then you say, oh, I can't get pregnant. I'm in early menopause. What? That brings up a whole nother gamut of issues. So guys, I'm rambling. I apologize. But I say all of that to say um, my my year ended kind of, it ended on a positive note because I did have my scans after having, you know, my breast pains and everything came back positive. So that's a good thing. On the other end of that spectrum is I found out I was having breast pain. I was having like crazy mood swings. I was having some other symptoms because I'm in now early menopause. So there's that. <laughs> there's that on this side of living life after breast cancer. Um, but that's kind of why I wanted to start, you know, with the bad or negative things or not so good things because when I tell you those are the only three things those are the only three things I could actually come up with at the end of my year that were negative or not so good because here's the thing all of the things that I listed besides maybe losing friends but all of them I can process through all of them I'm going to live after that's the kicker. <laughs> okay. Uh, but let's get into this positive stuff. Okay. Enough negative. And I'm going to run through these because I, I didn't realize <laughs> to be honest, guys, I did not realize how much stuff I did this year. I did not I really, really didn't. And here's the thing. Once you concentrate for me, once you concentrate on a thing, for so long, like a podcast, like I feel like the podcast was my whole year, <laughs> but it wasn't. I literally lived so much life before. And again, I feel like it's, it's not necessarily a negative thing that I didn't remember some of this stuff, but I'm living so much life. <laughs> that I did not remember how much stuff I actually did this year. In these last 12 months, I did so much freaking stuff. Okay. So we're, we're going to just dive in. We're just going to get into it. So first things first, 
if I have to go month, I'm not going to go by my month. I'm not going to do that to you guys. But if we had to start towards the beginning of the year now, if any of you know, going from 2017 to going, coming into 2018, it kind of was a low moment for me then because I lost my very first cancer friend. Her name was Haley. Um, but I did a blog post about it towards the beginning of this year. Check it out, thisexceptionaljourney.com. It was a difficult thing. It was a very, very difficult thing. So ending my 2017, going into 2018, um, I was low but not depressed. You know what I mean, if that makes sense. Um, and I was determined to just live a positive life in 2018. 18. That was really my goal. I didn't have any resolves. I didn't have anything particular that um, I wanted to accomplish or do. I knew there were conferences that I wanted to attend. Um, but literally, I had just finished. I feel like, to be honest, guys, if I'm being honest, I felt like in 2017, I had just finished my first year of life if that makes sense, because 2016 was all about cancer. It was all about treatments. It was all about surgery. It was all about transitions. It was all about radiation. And then 2017 came and I was like, okay, let me see how I, how I can make my story make a difference. So I went to conferences. I went to trainings. Um, I met some amazing people, whether through living beyond breast cancer, a young adult, Mm -mm. Well, the Young Adult Cancer Support Group, but also through um, Young Survivor Coalition, through National Breast Cancer Coalition. I met some amazing people. Um, so 2017 was kind of all about learning literally from the ground up, learning the new me, if that makes sense. Uh, but in 2018, I was like, OK, how can we make a difference? which is why I started this exceptional journey blog at the end of 2017. I was like, okay, I'm not going to let her memory live in vain. So I was like, how can I make a difference? How can I make my story st not necessarily stand out? Cause it's not like I'm looking for recollection, but how can I say to other young adult breast cancer survivors or otherwise you can make it because I did. So then this exceptional journey came about in January. So this year has really been about growing. It has really been about stretching, <laughs> if I'm honest, because again, I'm chatty Kathy all day. Like if you bring up a certain subject that I love, I'm all about it. But most of the people that I spend a lot of time with, or at least are in my environment with, for an extended period of time, they'll tell you, I don't talk much. I don't, because to be honest, I mean, I love people. I love helping people, but after coming from breast cancer, you're kind of still trying to fi find your way. You're still trying to find out where you fit and any cancer survivors out there who understand or any survivors of anything understand after you come from a diagnosis, you're like, or anything that you've gone through, it doesn't even have to be a diagnosis, but anything big you come from, you kind of have to weave and find your way again through society. So a lot of times I listen versus talk, but it's been interesting. It, it definitely has been interesting uh, for the good, not necessarily a bad thing, but it's it's been for the good. So that's why I was like, let me just think about what I've gone through. Let me think about for a minute 2018 being my like springboard back into life. Um, 2018, I mean, sorry, 2017 was great. It was, but that was kind of like my training ground. If nothing else, it was my training ground. And here I am in 2018, like, let's get it done. <laughs> I trained, I learned Let's get it done. So in my ramblings, I say all of that to say 2018 was amazing. I'm going to let you guys know just a few of the things that I did. There's more than a few because few is like three or more, right? No, there's more than more than three or four. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cracked myself up. There are more than three or four that I'm going to let you guys know about. 
one of the first things I wanted to let you guys know, of course, is I started my blog in January. I started writing for this blog actually in the end of 2017 because I knew I wanted to get my voice out there. I wanted my story and to be able to help someone because in all of the arenas I was going to and all of the conferences I was going through, when people were listening to my story and where I was coming from, they were like, oh my goodness, why have I not known you before? And of course, I'm a very humble person. Don't get me wrong. This did not puff me up at any way. If anything, it made me realize I want to be able to meet, reach more people. Uh, and I was like, okay, I need to take this into consideration. And hence the blog was born January, 2018. So that was one of the biggest things, of course, um, that happened then. Um, I actually was able to attend a few amazing events. <laughs> so first things first, I went to the YSC summit, which happened in, I think, February of this year. It was between either end of February, beginning of March. I think it was in February of this year. I went with my girl, Joel. Hey, Joel, how you doing, girl? Um, we had a phenomenal time. But the crazy thing about it is, is in that conference, um, it actually led me because I was asking questions. I was like, who's our state leader of Pennsylvania? And people were like, we don't know. And I was like, well, I need a connection. <laughs> I'm from Pittsburgh. I need somebody to connect to. Let me know. So I actually ended up connecting with um, the regional director of the Northeast, including, of course, Pittsburgh. She was like, oh, you know, I'm so glad you're interested. I then ended up meeting the um, director of community engagement for this region as well. Hey, Mary. Hey, Stacy. How y'all doing? Um, and she was like, you know what? That's a good question. I'm going to figure it out before the end of the conference. I didn't get an answer. Lo and behold, Mary emails me, who is the director of community engagement. Um, and it's like, hey, girl. Um, I think you would be a great fit for the state leader. As of right now, Pennsylvania does not have any active state leaders. You should do it. I was like, what? I wasn't asking to sign up. <laughs> I was asking to get connected. So lo and behold, I say all of that to say communication between Mary and Stacy after the conference went on for a couple months. And by March, I maybe end of March, beginning of April, I was one of the Pennsylvania state leaders for Young Survival Coalition. <laughs> Another high of my 2018, okay? Um, so started the blog, you know, went to the YSC Summit, um, became a state leader. Um, and then because there was such a strong presence of Pittsburgh breast cancer survivors at the Young Survival Coalition in Orlando this year, they decided to have their one day symposium, which I think we have like once or twice a year, but because our presence was so strong this year in Orlando, they decided to have it here in Pittsburgh in June. And we were all excited. Yes, let's go. I was the new state leader. I don't even know what that means yet, but y'all gonna be in my city. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that's so funny. Every time I talk about it, the regional director, Stacy, was like, oh, we're looking for speakers and, you know, we're looking for survivors that have, they had criteria. I didn't meet the criteria. So I was like, okay, Stacy, I'll keep looking around. I'll keep, you know, looking around. <laughs> and so they had connections to um, other organizations here in the city that were connected to other young adult breast cancer survivors, including dot, 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 the Young Adult Cancer Survivor Coalition out of the Cancer Caring Center, which is my support group that I'm a part of. And they reached out to the leader. Her name is Stephanie. She's amazing. Hey, Steph, how you doing? Um, and they were like, do you know of any survivor speakers, you know, we could talk to and speak at the symposium in June. And she was like, she emailed me, Yolanda, I already put in your name. <laughs> I think you would be phenomenal, phenomenal at this. You're going to do it. I was like, what? Like Stacy asked me and I said nothing about myself, but here we are. <laughs> and here you are putting me in. So long story short, Stephanie put my information in. Someone from their outreach team reached out to me and said, you know, ask me X amount of questions. What would you talk about? What do you want your, you know, your talk to be about? And 
ends up, I ended up speaking at the very first YSC symposium here in Pittsburgh. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing, phenomenal time. Literally, I can't even put into words, first of all, the frustration and nervousness I had <laughs> leading up to it. And then the the sigh of relief and how amazing it felt afterwards to get the feedback to hear. And I was a lunchtime keynote speaker. It was phenomenal to speak for a national organization at their one day symposium. You could have picked anyone. Here's the thing when you have, and this is just my own thought process behind it. When you have a one day symposium, I'm, I'm sorry, when you have a three day summit, you can almost pick any, not anybody, if that makes sense, but you have so many sessions, you have so many lunch times, you have so many evening sessions, you can pick like 20 people, legit 20 to 25 people for the whole entire weekend. But a one day joint, when you pick people for a one day joint, to me, that's a big deal. And I took it that way because you have one day to get it right. <laughs> In a city that you've never been in, you have one day to get it right. And the fact that they chose me to be the lunchtime keynote speaker blew my mind. So shout out to YSC, to Stacy and Mary for letting that happen. Hey, y'all. Another big deal. And so many other things will come from that in the future that you guys will hear about. Um, so what else happened this year? So I went with... Um, Ma critical mass, which is another young adult cancer support, um, a young adult, yeah, cancer support group. Um, it, it's national. They had a lobby day. Why not do some, you know, advocacy on Capitol Hill, right? Very first time I've ever been in Capitol Hill. I remember in ninth grade, we went to DC and we sat on the steps and we took pictures. But other than that, like my very, and we were in the trenches, like we were in the tunnels, we were in some of their offices. I actually got to meet my state representative, Mike Doyle, Pittsburgh, who's actually from around the same uh, part of the city that my mom and dad are from. So he and I, I'll probably, if you're watching the YouTube video, I'll try to insert some pictures here. Um, and if you're listening, just go to my YouTube channel, not my YouTube channel, go to my Instagram and you'll see the pictures there. Um, but ha had a, a, a whole one-on-one -on -one with Mike Doyle what? And I was like, we were proposing a bill for young adult cancer um, support. And, you know, people being able to defer their loans, um, if they're in active treatment, something you thought, or think would actually be done or taken care of. And it wasn't guys, it wasn't. So another great time, it was just one day for a couple hours, met some phenomenal people, um, had a good time. It was a great experience. Again, very first time. It was it was amazing. Um, so lobby day, state leader. Um, I got to go to San Diego this year and participate in the National Breast Cancer Coalition's Project Lead, um, where they teach you the research and scientific advocacy side of breast cancer. Seven day, hella intensive. You're learning from the very intricacies of cell growth up until why breast cancer happens and in the biggest terms necessary besides your genetics. We learned about immunotherapy. We learned about clinical trials. We learned about so much. It was an amazing time. Again, I met some very phenomenal people and I'm still connected to them to this day. So how y'all doing? Thank you. <laughs> um, I actually went to a conference in Denver, never had been to Denver. It was the woman evolve conference with Sarah Jakes Roberts. I just, it was amazing time. It, if anyone is familiar with TD Jakes, it was her, his daughter who is now married to Ray, married to to Ray Roberts, Sarah Jakes Roberts. It was her conference an amazing time. If you can check it out, definitely go in 2019. I am going in 2019. I went again with my girl, Joel. How you doing, sis? How you doing? Um, and it was a phenomenal time. Phenomenal time. Um, so Project Lead, Woman Evolve, um, Blog, YSC Summit. Um, you know, I went to some little stuff here and there, like with my, um, my support group here 
in Pittsburgh, every month we have an outing. So I've done archery, I've done kayaking, I've done axe throwing. Hello, y'all. <laughs> um, I've gone to a baseball game. Um, and even with my job at work, we our zoo here has like a really cool um, fundraiser where they bring in corporate, you know, peeps and they call it the zoo brew. So all of these beer people are around, you get a little cup. Maybe I'll insert a picture here if you're looking at the YouTube video. You get this little cup and it's called zoo brew and you just ask people to put beer in your cup and you walk around the whole entire zoo. And by the time you get to the tippy top, it's like, okay, it's time to go. So it was a cool experience. It was definitely a cool experience. I've gone to some weddings. A couple of my cousins have gotten married. A couple of people close to me have had babies. Um, it's, it's been an amazing year. It is definitely have been, it definitely has been, um, an amazing year. I've sang at some amazing places, sang behind some amazing, amazing, like national recording artists, gospel recording artists. I'm speaking of guys, it's been amazing. And I don't want to prolong this. I've already rambled <laughs> and I'm trying to keep this podcast under a certain amount of time, but I bring all of this up to say that as you can tell in any place in your walk of life, good things happen and bad things happen. They both happen to all of us, regardless of what you see people going through on the outside, good and bad happen to all of us in any extended period of time. The good that I told you about, or the not so good is just the tip of the iceberg, to be honest of what I've gone through or what I've faced or what I've seen or what I've participated in. So much stuff, good and bad, has happened. I've I've participated in so many other things, but those are the things I wanted to highlight. Say all of that to say, 2019 is gonna be different for me because I'm determined. I am determined, I am focused to make it better than what this year is. And here's the kicker. My 2018 was not bad here. It kills me when people post on social media and, you know, talk about in their own casual conversations. Oh, you know what? I want a new year, new me. Okay. I get it. New year, new you. All right. Do you, um, oh, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds. Cool. Okay. I want to lose some weight as well. I get it. Um, oh, I want this to be accomplished. These resolutions I'm talking about, which is why I said I was going to come back to them later. There's nothing wrong with having resolutions. There's not, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a resolution, a thing that you want to accomplish, a goal that you want to accomplish. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing whatsoever. Here's the problem. A lot of times, and I can only speak for me, when I know there's a thing that I want to attain, I usually plan. I think about it. I plan. I make the plan, which means write it out. And then I execute the plan. You see those extra steps that it took for me to get there? So what I've made up in my mind is... For 2019, I am going to resolve certain things and not resolve like there's a tiff or a tat and I'm going to resolve it for you. No, I am going to resolve. And let me give you the definition. The definition to resolve something, it's a verb. That's key. To decide firmly on a course of action. So we're now going from a thing that we want to accomplish to an action we're going to carry out. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sound preachy. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like I'm giving you a lecture. But for me, my 2019, I'm doing action. I am doing verbs. I'm not, I'm not trying to reach a thing. This thing is usually not obtainable because we have to set up all these steps in order to achieve it. No, 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 no. I'm going to resolve to do things, which means I'm going to every day be carrying out different actions in order to get it accomplished. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> 
But I just wanted to share really quickly with you guys what some of the things I'm going to resolve to do in 2019. Now, let's be honest. We all know, regardless of if it's a noun or a verb, <laughs> it's going to take work, right? It is going to take work to go from one place to another. It is going to take work. And I'm down, <laughs> literally. I am down. I have so many dreams, so many visions that I want to take, you know, full, full control of full fruition to come. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm down. Let me just tell you about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I get so excited about this. So a few things I resolve. Number one, to be gentle with myself. This is a big one, guys. This for me is a big one because I'm so hard on myself a lot of times. If things don't turn out the way I want them to, or if a relationship doesn't turn out the way I want it to, I'm so, I'm hard on myself. Well, this is what you could have did better, or this is what you should have did. Literally every day, literally every day. So 2019, I'm going to be more gentle and not only be more honest, but bring the, the gentleness with the honesty. Like, yeah, you could have did this better, but this is how you can grow. Make sense? Next, I'm going to invest in me. <laughs> let me just let that sink in real quick. I'm actually going to throw my whole self at my dreams, at my visions, at my goals, collabs, sponsorships. It's all going down. <laughs> I'm going to invest in me because here's the thing. I've always had dreams and visions since I was younger. I've always had things I wanted to accomplish and get done, but I've never invested in me, whether that's time, energy, finances. I'm going to fully throw myself at my dreams and visions for, the t for 2019. And not only that, I mean, I've invested in other people. People have told me they had dreams. I'm like, I'm all in. Okay, but do that same thing for you. Okay. <laughs> in 2019, I will be. <laughs> okay. Um, also, one of the big resolves um, that I want to carry out is always remember the pain of cancer so that it can push me to help others. Here's the kicker, guys. After you become a survivor, every day is not guaranteed. We all know that. I mean, any of us with anything know that er the next day is not promised, right? But the pains of cancer I'm talking about are surgery, chemo, radiation, and now the emotional aftermath. So keeping in touch with the pain that came with my breast cancer journey, I feel like is going to make me a better advocate further down the line. And what I want to ensure I do, not just for this podcast, not just for my blog, but even for public speaking I'm going to do in the future and other and <clears throat> excuse me endeavors I have coming up and other projects I'm working on, I want to keep in, in connection with this pain so I remember what it means to be there so I know how I want to help someone else. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's what I resolve. Another resolve I have is to give more time, love, and understanding to others. To be honest, guys, I spent a lot of time this year alone and not necessarily, I mean, I spent time with friends and family, of course. I went out and, you know, but I'm saying in my downtime after work, I spent a lot of time with me because I was determined to at least get some of my dreams and fruition, some of my dreams and visions to fruition. Um, and that takes you time that takes alone time sometimes but in 2019 I'm going to be more determined I am going to resolve to spend more time with my loved ones to show more love to show more understanding to show and give more time to the people that I care about um you know after a breast cancer or any diagnosis you try to find you you try to find you all over again, which is what my 17 was. And then now in 2018, and now that I've kind of find a, found a little way, next year is all going to be about, part of course I resolve, is to spend more time with the people that I love. Give them more time, give them more love, and give them more understanding for exactly where they are. Make sense? Cool. Um, I'm going to walk more in my passion and my purpose. Y'all going to see some stuff coming out. 
I'm just saying. I'm working on a few things. I got a couple irons in the pot. All I'm saying is, guys, is if you enjoy the podcast and you understand me as a person and where I've, where I am on this journey, you definitely want to stay tuned because I have some good stuff coming up for you guys. Cool. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to kind of put myself out there. You know, I can, I'm cool with being in the back. I am absolutely okay, guys. I am okay with being in the background. Even having this podcast is a big deal. Having the blog is a big deal to me. But I have to recognize and realize that a part of my purpose and passion is putting front my journey and hence this exceptional journey. And I, I, I resolve to do more of this. You know, on my Instagram, if you look at it, it has a lot of quotes, which have all touched me personally. That's not a bad thing. But you don't see a lot of me. Because I'm cool with not being on there, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm going to change that in 2019 because there are some people, depending upon what you're going through or where you are in your walk of life, you probably need to see somebody that looks like you. I know for me it helps. When I look at other Instagram profiles or when I look up other small business owners or women who are entrepreneurs, when they look like me, I'm like, okay, I get it. But people can't see that if you don't put yourself out there right <laughs> so I've resolved this year to show more of me um that's not gonna be an easy task but I'm up for the challenge I'm, I'm letting you guys know and I know part of that comes with self-confidence you know what I mean not even just after breast cancer but growing up I really to be honest I mean and again this may come up later I didn't really have that much self-confidence I was good at sports um, I was good at being the class clown. I was good at being a communicator. That was basically it. I, I didn't have a lot, a lot of self-confidence in me as a person, as a woman. And that's what I'm resolving to change with my speech, speaking more positive to myself, um, speaking more positively and about others. Um, but just being me after cancer, learning this new me and moving forward, right? <sighs> It felt, it felt good to get those off my chest, guys. <laughs> Listen, these are my resolves. Again, I am, I am purposely mentally painting the picture to allow myself to be as positive and as forward moving as possible in 2019. I can only do that for me. What are you doing for you? You know, there's always a call to action. You know, there's always something I want you to do. <laughs> what are you doing for you? Um, 2018 may have not ended the best. It may have not. But what are you going to do in 2018 to make it better? What have you resolved in your heart and in your mind that you're going to do for you? You always got to do for you first. What are you going to do for you? And then what are you going to do for others that would make your to the 2019 even better, far surpass what your 2018 looks like. You let me know. Hit me up in the comments, hashtag TEJ podcast. Let me know what your, what your resolves are, not your resolutions, because those quickly fade. What are you resolving to do in 2019 that will change the trajectory of your life? Not meaning to get deep, but that's just how excited I am about 2019, guys. I'm uber excited. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. I crack myself up every time, but guys, listen, that's all I have. Literally. Uh, I rambled somewhere in there. And if you're still listening, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but literally 2018 was great for me. I did have some lows. And again, there were some others that I didn't bring up that were kind of personal, you know, we'll, we'll talk about them at another time. Uh, but I really have to be real and say my goods far outweigh my bad or not so good. You can probably say the same thing if you take a look and if you can't, I'm sorry, but 2019 is a new year. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> but this is all I have for now, guys. Thank you again so, so much for rocking with me just for a little while. If you've made it this far, hit that like hit that share, hit that comment. Let me know what you think. Guys, it's the end of 2018. 
I hope it's brought you everything that you've wanted. And if not, I'm hoping that you make it everything you want in 2019. I'm going to check you guys on the other side. So let me be the first to tell you Happy New Year to 2019.